Welcome to a short reflection by Sebastian Makud in Canto II of Dante's Purgatorio. At the seashore, Dante sees a light on the horizon and invests thirty lines of poetry in describing its approach. What is on its way is the angel boatman from the mouth of the river Tiber, the place where all souls who die in a state of grace await for transport to the base of the mountain, where they may ascend at variable speeds according to the amount of purification they must undergo before they are ready to enter heaven. His boat, which is so light it soars across the water rather than touches it, carries more than a hundred such heaven-bound souls. The comparison is aptly made to the river of Acheron, across which Charon ferries sinners destined for hell. In Chardi notes the same language even is used for the gathering of souls. In hell, they cast themselves at Charon's signal from the shore, and here they cast themselves at the angel signal to the shore. Among the souls who disembark is one Casella, a friend of Dante in life, and one who had died some time before, but is only just now arriving on the island. He explains to Dante that he had tried to board the angel skiff before, but he had been told to wait. Like the refugees Pine, who are holed up in Casablanca at the star of the film by the same name, maybe tomorrow we'll be on the plane. The souls destined for purgatory themselves pine and yearn for passage, required, Chardy surmises, to expiate by a delay at their gathering point. This is different from the alacrity with which Charon herded in the souls destined for the pit of woe. Those souls gained nothing by delay, for no period of expiation would have allayed for them their guilt. But something interesting has happened here. Bonifacio VIII had declared the year 1300 a jubilee year, and extended the indulgences even to the dead, so the angel has taken everyone who's asked. But this is Pope Bonifacio VIII, whom Dante has pre-consigned to eternal torment in the eighth circle of hell. The principle at work here is that the office is greater than the man who fills it. Even the angels must continue to obey it, for the commandment of Matthew 18:18 18, 18 comes into play. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever you loosen on earth is loosened in heaven. Dante and Casella are so enamored of talking with one another that Cato's attention is attracted by the gaggle of souls loitering on the shore and descends upon them, scattering them like pigeons. What's this? What's this? Negligence! Loitering! O oh, laggard crew! Run to the mountain and strip off the scurf that lets not God be manifest in you! Dante never gets to hear Casella's verses, beyond love that speaks its reasons in my heart, before he gets the reality check. While we'll find that souls do have idle time in purgatory, not one of them should pursue idleness. We have to pursue God with zeal, with alacrity, otherwise we're not exercising good stewardship over our time. This is true not only for our eventual sojourn through purgatory, but also for our time here on earth. Every one of our pursuits within creation should carry us closer to its creator. The thing to note in Casella's final words is the introduction to a new theme, that of Dante's own love poetry expressed in La Vita Nuova, the little book he wrote of his love for Beatrice, composed during his adolescence and early adulthood. A blossoming, hopeful, and fruitful love it is that begins the theme of the ascent.